the Royal Romanian Army. The first attempt at creating a large modern army force of Romania was during the 1848 revolution in the state of Wallachia. This idea was developed by Georgi Majoru, however it quickly disbanded before they faced a full-on Ottoman attack. The current Romanian land forces were formed in 1859, immediately after the unification of Wallachia with Moldavia and were commanded by Alexandru Ion Cuza, the dominator of Romania until his abdication in 1866. In 1877, at the request of Grand Duke Nicholas Konstantinovich of Russia, the Romanian army, fused with Russian forces led by King Carol I of Romania, fought in what was to become the Romanian War of Independence. They participated in the Siege of Plevna and several other battles, and, well, the Romanians of course won this war but suffered around 27,000 casualties. Until World War I, the Romanian army did not face any other serious action. <laughs> The Marshal of Romania, or Marshalul Romaniae, was the highest achievable rank within the Kingdom of Romania and still is within the Republic. It acts as the Commander-in-Chief of the military and, well, also acts as a Field Marshal or a 5-star rank. Currently, it can only be bestowed upon those serving as a General or an Admiral during a time of war, and it can be distinguished by cross martial batons insignia over a floral gold pattern on the shoulder boards. Out of the people to hold this rank, three were non-royals and the rest were. Constantine Prezan, Alexandru Avarescu and Ion Antonescu were all military generals. The first two being during the First World War and the second one being World War II and the fascist dictator of Romania. All other persons to hold this rank include Ferdinand I, Carol II and Michael I of Romania. The first king, however, Carol I, was simultaneously both a German and Russian field marshal. The rank of general, or in Romanian, well it's still general, was the second highest rank within the land forces of the Romanian kingdom. Its role was broad and could cover anything from a field army commander to the inspector general's office to the chief of general staff. It would be considered a four-star rank in all western countries without having a NATO code of OF9. It could also be recognised by four gold or silver coloured stripes across the shoulder board, which itself was decorated in the same gold floral pattern as the marshal. The Army Lieutenant General, or in Romanian, the General Locotenant, was the second highest rank within the Romanian Royal Army. Its role, much similar to its predecessors, was broad in its responsibilities. A particular figure that I've chosen to illustrate the various roles that this rank could hold is a Mr. Lieutenant General George Teodorescu. He served as the Under Secretary of State, Commandant of the War School, and the Divisional Commander. They could be recognised by three gold or silver coloured stripes across a shoulder board which itself was decorated in a floral gold pattern. Next we have the rank of Major General or General Mayor. It's the second lowest general officer rank within the Royal Romanian Army and has a general theme with these ranks, pun intended of course. Another fellow that I've chosen to illustrate the career path is Major General Stoyescu, who served on the Supreme Army Council, Divisional Command and Army Aviation Command. It can be recognised by two gold or silver coloured stripes across the shoulder board which itself was decorated in a floral gold pattern. Next we have the rank of Brigadier General, or in Romanian the General de Brigada, which was the lowest General Staff Officer rank within the Royal Romanian Army. Its roles and responsibilities were less than its successors, however it did hold some command over a brigade, hence of course the name, and could hold position within a staff office. A Mr. General de Brigada in Nicolae Daikonescu's career was as follows. He was the military advisor to Poland, Director General of the Policing Services. This was actually quite rare for a general to hold, and he was of course a brigade commander. The rank of Colonel, or in Romanian, well, it's it's still Colonel, was the highest achievable staff officer rank within the Royal Romanian Army. Now, the role of this rank was to either command a brigade or a regiment of the army, or serve on the staff. This could be recognised by three gold or silver stripes on the rear shoulder board, which contained a singular vertical gold stripe. Next, we have the rank of Lieutenant Colonel, or in Romanian, the Colonel Logotenent, which was the middle of the staff officer ranks within the Royal Romanian Army. Now, the role of the staff rank was was to, well, command either a battalion or a regiment of the army and perhaps also serve on the staff. This could be recognised by two gold or silver stripes across the shoulder board which contained a singular vertical gold stripe. Lastly, we have the rank of 
Major or in Romanian Major, which was the lowest achievable staff officer rank within the Royal Romanian Army. The role of this rank was to command either a battalion or a regiment and perhaps serve on the staff of the army. This could be recognized by one gold or silver stripe across a shoulder board which contained a singular vertical gold stripe. <laughs> The rank of captain, or in Romanian, Capitan, was the highest company officer rank within the army of the Kingdom of Romania. This rank's roles include, but were not limited to, a company or a battalion commander, and it could be recognised by three gold or silver stripes across a blank shoulder board. Now for the lieutenants. Firstly, the rank of lieutenant and second lieutenant, or in Romanian, locotenent and sub locotenent, were the platoon officer ranks within the Royal Romanian Army. These ranks roles were, of course, to command a platoon or serve in a very junior position in the staff and could be recognised by one or two gold or silver stripes across a blank shoulder board. <laughs> The warrant officer ranks in the Romanian army, which I couldn't find a direct translation for, they consist of three ranks, the chief warrant officer, senior warrant officer, and warrant officer. The role of these officers was to act as the aide to the officers of the regiment, much like the sergeant major. This role also played a vital position within commanding of a platoon. These could be recognised by three chevrons, or two and a half, or two bronzish bars across the shoulder board. The rank of Sergeant Major was the highest of the Sergeant ranks, and in Romanian it's called the Sergeant Major. And the, the role of the Sergeant Major would be a key one to any functioning unit, as they would act as the key line of communication between the soldiers and the officers. They would also hold command over larger sections, and very, very rarely, possibly a platoon if the army was in dire need of officers. It could be recognised by one and a half bars across the shoulder board. The lowest rank of the sergeant was, of course, sergeant or Romanian sergeant. Much like today's rank of sergeant, it would hold command over sections and usually, as others would, specialise in one particular aspect of the army, whether that be signalling, infantry, artillery, etc, etc. It could be recognised by a singular bronzish bar across the shoulder board. The rank of corporal was the lowest non-commissioned officer rank, or in Romanian, of course, caporal. It held command over squads of soldiers, but really held nothing larger than this, and it could be recognised by a double white bar across the shoulder board. <laughs> the private first class was the most senior of the enlisted ranks. In Romanian, it is known as Fruntash and could be directly translated to senior soldier. It held little importance in the terms of actual roles that it held, however, it was mainly used to distinguish soldiers of whom have achieve notable acts. During the Second World War, many were indeed skipped from this to straight through this really to corporal, surpassing private first class, of course. It could be recognised by a singular white silver stripe across the shoulder board. And lastly is the rank of private or soldier, or in Romanian they call it soldat. It holds little of no importance within the Royal Romanian Army in terms of command, but it was the virtual backbone of the military. All newly enlisted individuals were given this rank, other than this there were no other aspects of this rank to mention. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I, I certainly enjoyed making it, and I actually quite enjoyed finding the media for this one, because uh, I find Romania very, very fascinating. So, um, I hope you I hope you enjoyed. I hope you want to see more of these kind of videos. Uh, go ahead over to my community tab, and I'll probably do a poll there of what you want me to do next. Please like and subscribe. Uh, keep, keep sharing the word of the channel. I want to try and push this to 1,000 subscribers, if we can hopefully do that. But uh, other than that, I'll uh, hope to see you in the next video, and have a good one.